So when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vice. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm gonna get this soaking wet, and then we're gonna see what'll happen when we wring it out. Meredith and Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space, so instead I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start bringing it out. It's really wet. all over my hands, in fact, it rings out of the cloth into my hands, and if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. I think you're better at ping pong than I am. Now, something else I'm going to do is I'm going to make this bubble a little bit bigger, I'm going to add some water to it, and then I'm going to put in a fizzy tablet and show you what happens when we put fizzy tablets in water up here. fizzy tablet here and then the bubble's nice and close to the camera so I can show you. Here we go. I'll pop it in. And there you can see the bubble is starting to grow. All of the gas is being released but all it's doing is it's making that bubble of water get bigger and bigger and you can see it fizzing up there. Scariest Things Said by Astronauts, Part 2. There is no sound in space, and this is precisely what makes this story so strange. Back in 2003, astronaut Yang Lui was the first to be sent into space by the Chinese space program. When he was sitting in his space shuttle, he reportedly heard a knock. He described it as someone knocking the body of the spaceship just as knocking an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. And apparently, he's not the only one to have experienced this. Other Chinese astronauts between 2005 and 2008 have said to have heard similar things. astronauts drink water in space without gravity. In fact, this is different from on Earth, and you will drown if you are not careful. When the lid is opened, the water inside will not flow down, but form a big water polo, which is all attached to the astronaut's face. E. Then if you use a straw to suck, the water inside will not come out honestly along the straw, and even drinking water is so troublesome. So what will diarrhea and going to the toilet become? 
And so when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise somewhere. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm gonna get this soaking wet, and then we're gonna see what'll happen when we wring it out. Meredith and Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space, so instead I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start wringing it out. It's really wet. You go an entire year without showering, because astronauts do. They don't shower in space, even if they're there for a year. If you think about it, running water in microgravity environments like the ISS would be a nightmare. The Apollo astronauts attempted to give themselves sponge baths, but they went so long without changing their clothes that they didn't really help. In fact, the people that opened the Apollo capsules when they returned back to Earth said that the scent was like a slap in the face. On Skylab, astronauts took very complicated showers where they had to strap themselves into foot restraints and pull a tube up over, and then they would be sprayed with water and then it would suction up and then over and over again. It took two hours. Now on the ISS, they have very elevated sponge baths where they squeeze tubes of water and liquid soap right on their skin and hair and then wipe it up with a towel. And any excess water goes into an airflow system. Astronauts say that the ISS has a very lived-in smell things you still don't know. And when I finally got to go out the door, that was something different too. And I figured that would never happen without the uh, preparation we had training the team. And so I I've always liked to play with fire. Oh.